The Hall of Fame finalists have been announced for the class of 2023. Who's in and who's out in our humble opinions and our six pack of picks as we do every Thursday for week 18 regular season finales coming up right now. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at PD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on that entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Uh, let's start with the, the Hall of Fame finalists here. If and- you don't mind, I want to go a quick little shout out here. Happy birthday to Virginia Hallis McCaskey. She turns 100 today as the principal owner of the Bears. She's George Papa Bear Hallis's oldest child. She took over the team in 1983 when Papa Bear passed away. Turns 100 today. You know, so how about that? Wow. Uh, Old school Virginia Hallis McCaskey, 100th birthday today. Congratulations. I just saw a story this morning about uh, the, the now the oldest woman in America is in California at 114 years old. So Holy here's to Virginia uh, Hallis McCaskey. Hopefully she can get there and one day be the uh, the oldest person in the United States. That's, yeah, that's how about that? NFL oh, legend. Congrats. Yeah, NFL legend. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of some NFL Royalties. legends, Matt, we got 15 yeah. modern era players announced as the finalists here for the Pro Football Hall of Fame class of 2023. Let's just roll through this really quick. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're a bigger fan of the 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 MVP or the uh, the the Hall, Hall of Fame, Fame up, conversation yeah. than I am. Uh, the the Hall of Fame frustrates me because of everything that's involved in it and how personal it is, and every single person has a different opinion and what actually are the rules to get in. And um, it, it's a it's a frustrating topic for me. So I'm going to let you lead the way. I'm just going to throw some names at you, and you tell me what you think about these guys if they are Hall of Famers. And we're going to go in. I'm just going to rapid fire. I'm going to say yes, okay. they're definitely in. I don't think okay. so, or a maybe. Alphabetical order here. Jared Allen, defensive end from Kansas City Chiefs early in his career, uh, really made waves with the Minnesota Vikings for the bulk of his career. And then uh, some Bears and some Carolina Panthers at the end, from 2004 to 2015. Really good career, really good player. Is he a Hall of Famer, Matt? Real quick, this is starting to be the era, obviously, of the passing game, which also means the era of sacks. You know, I mean, quarterback standards, wide receiver standards have gone up. There's three defensive end edge guys in this class. I think Allen's the least likely of the three to go. Doesn't feel Hall of Famery to me. Right, right. Really good player, though. Really good player, sure. And this is where this is where it gets frustrating for me because every – team and every fan base and you know every era grows up with guys are like oh man i love that guy he was awesome but that does just being great doesn't mean you're a hall of famer and to me the hall of fame should be smaller and it should not even be a conversation i hear what you're saying as soon as you get you start to slip down that slope and then this guy's in so then this guy has stats similar now he's got to be in and then you know then you have the hall of everybody instead of the hall of fame you know um how about Willie Anderson, offensive tackle, Cincinnati Bengals for a decade, had a little Ravens run at the end of his career. But, I mean, everyone thinks of Willie Anderson, Cincinnati Bengals, stalwart offensive tackle for over a decade. Don't think so. I mean, again, I mean, the standards have to be very high. So don't take it personally when I, your favorite guy I say, I don't think gets in here because only a handful do, and there's a lot on this list. So most aren't going to make it. I don't think Anderson does. Ronde Barber, really good player, corner. Tampa two. I, when I think of a Tampa two cover two cornerback, I think Rondé Barber, right? Tampa Bay Buccaneers, part of those great yep. defenses in the early two thousands, ninety seven to twenty twelve. Only one team in his career, Tampa Bay, like that. He fit that scheme and he played that scheme his entire career. And there's a lot of value to that. There, there's a lot of history to that. But I think that's a no. I don't think he's Champ Bailey level shutdown corner. 
I would agree with you there. Yeah. How about Dwight Freeney? Uh, he was the best pass rusher for a time in his day, part of his decade-long career with the Indianapolis Colts, then kind of bounced around a little bit. I think it does hurt players when they do bounce around a little and you see an older player that's not playing at his prime level anymore, but it does help your total statistical numbers in the conversation of is a guy a Hall of Famer or not, too, when you're in that table and these guys are trying to argue for if a guy should be in or out. Dwight Freeney. Uh, Colts then played a little with the uh, bounce around, I think, in, in four consecutive years to end his career. Chargers, Cardinals, uh, Falcons, Seahawks, and I don't even remember the Seahawks-Lions part at the No, me neither. I mean, he made like, 17. one game or something, right? Yeah, uh, but uh, first time on the ballot, I believe, for Dwight Freeney. What do you think? Hall of Famer? I think yes, and definitely over Allen. He was one of the defensive ends I was referencing. I think yes, but maybe not in this class. I mean, I think before long he'll be in, though. This is a really good one, and and probably one of the better arguments as far as Hall of Fame goes, Devin Hester. And obviously he came in as a defensive back, but he made his career as a kick returner mm-hmm. and he played started playing offense at wide receivers kind of like reminds me a little bit of Cordero Patterson where you, you know you're you're pigeonholed in one position coming out of school and you realize after a little bit in your NFL career it's like oh this guy's a lot better doing this other thing so that's what he should do all the time um and yeah just became one of the greatest returners of all time for the Chicago Bears played a little with the Falcons and the Ravens at the end of his career as well what do you think a guy who touched the ball so little right. and was not a stalwart on either the offense or defensive side of the ball Devin Hester Hall of Famer? Specialists are really hard, of course. Like one day Justin Tucker's gonna come up and he's gonna get in and he I have no problem with it. He the should pro- be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, of course. But the Tucker Hester's, I mean, and I think Hester's not quite the Tucker level, but is if any returner is gonna go, it should be him. My problem is when you can only pick six, can I leave Freeney off for Hester? Can I leave the best guard in the class off for Hester that played so many more snaps? But I would not have any issue with Hester going to the Hall of Fame, and I think he deserves to be in. And I, and I buy the argument, but, like, you're going to put a guy in the Hall of Fame who scored nine career touchdowns or whatever it was? Right, right. You no, know, it's a Hall of Famer because he was this really good at this one thing and had these big plays. I, I would say uh, another player impacted the game more that clearly wouldn't have had a Hall of Fame career as a pure wide receiver or a pure defensive back than a specialist. Right, right. So that's where it gets difficult for me. But he was clearly the best at his position. And so that's that does weigh heavily, and, and I wouldn't fault anybody for voting for Devin Hester. It'd be a little bit more difficult for me. Sure, I mean, changed games. Yes, he changed a few games. Right? Yeah, oh, two well, a, two a year. Yeah, I mean, people didn't kick his way, and they, I mean, they they did different things. So yeah, yeah, he deal. affected it in that way where you changed right. the way you played. That you 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 changed the way you kicked against them, essentially. Yeah. Yes, but like the next two names on the list are Tory Holt and Andre Johnson. They changed games too, but every snap, every with snap, where I'm gonna, you know, my coverage goes, and can I put an extra guy in the box? And you know, so he's not alone in making impact plays or changing the game quickly. What's also interesting about the passing era in the NFL is is the bar now higher for Hall of Fame receivers? Where you look at Torrey Holt and Andre Johnson, and you say, okay, yes, but then were they great, great? Right. So great compared to other, because you look at stats and of course they're going to look good against the peers that are in the hall of fame, but does that level have to raise? We're going to talk about that a lot, probably in upcoming years with the hall of fame for receivers and quarterbacks. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe we'll just lump the, we lump those two together. Let's throw Reggie Wayne in there as well. He's also in this class. And I yes. think all three have very good resumes. I thought Holt was a better player than Bruce who just went in his teammate. I would probably put Andre in ahead of Holt and Wayne would probably be third, but it's really competitive for receivers for all the reasons you mentioned. Um, I think they all get in eventually, but it's going to be tough. It's also tough because when teammates, we talk about Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne, or you talked about Torrey Holt and Isaac Bruce. And it's like, well, what, what else was going on there? Why did it just happen that both these amazing, great hall of fame wide receivers were on the same team at the same time? Mm-hmm. Or were there other factors and other targets and like other, Peyton you know, Manning. yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I with it too. And, and you don't want to take anything like they helped Peyton Manning of as course. much as he helped them, but, is, but was they it really Peyton case? Manning. Is, uh, all famers happen to get got, got together or should we be looking at other factors in this? So that, that, that makes it a little bit more difficult. You just like put everybody from a good offense in the hall of fame. I wonder how many pairs of receivers that played together are actually in. I mean, right. off the top of my head, I know Swan and Stallworth, but that was many moons ago, you know? 
So uh, again, you said in for Andre Johnson and and not for Holt and and Reggie Wayne. Probably in this class, but eventually, I bet all three end up in there. Yeah, I get the same feeling. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. not like slam dunk first ballot. You know, in no matter Have what, to, right? Might take a while, and we're seeing that with with some of these guys. All right, we got a few more names next, and then we'll get to our six pack of picks for all right. week eighteen. And of course, all of the lines we reference on today's episode are from Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis this season. Make sure you get informed at BetOnline.net before you go make your uh, bets at BetOnline. Get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. Of course, tons of NFL lines and props, and you know Super Bowl futures, draft stuff as well. Uh, but you can also find college football and college basketball, NBA, of course. Any sport out there, you can find it. You can even find casino games as well at Bet Online. And if you love sports podcasts, which I'm sure you do, you can find those as well at Bet Online. Always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information. Head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more at Bet Online, where the game starts. I do want to thank everybody once again for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen every day. Subscribe to the Locked On NFL channel on YouTube. That is the home of Peacock and Williamson, also the home of Locked On NFL podcast and tons of other great uh, shows like in-depth analysis of the biggest games with NFL key predictions every Friday and Monday. Local insiders cover the weekend with game-to-game episodes. Locked On NFL available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Matt, let's finish up this uh, Hall of Fame portion here with the 2023 modern era finalists. Albert Lewis, cornerback from the Kansas City Chiefs. We're going back here. We're going back to the 80s and 90s with Albert Lewis. Yeah, 15-year career, excellent career, but sorry, no. I remember him back in the uh, like first Tech Mobile days. Like you mm, see, I see that. You, you see a name, you're like, oh, this who's this? What's this great Kansas City Chiefs defense? You know, it's like Christian Okoye, Barry Word. Like, <laughs> The name is always up there and always a, a really good player. So that's that's how I think of those players in the late 80s and early 90s is, is the video game versions of themselves. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah a great player, but no. Uh, this is the easiest one on the list, in my opinion. Yes. Uh, Daryl Rivas in? No doubt. Um, makes me feel old. I recruited Darrell to Pitt when he was 17, and he, I guess he's come a long way since. I, I'm not going to take any credit for him going to the hall, but I, I think he <laughs> – I'm but sure there's some words of wisdom as young recruiter Matt Williamson shaped uh, his life, brushed up against Daryl Rivas that, that that really uh, created that, and um, I mean he's got an island named after him. So right, it helped our recruiting sp- spiel that his mother's brother is Sean Gilbert, who was a pit legend and fourth overall pick too. So you know that that didn't oh, hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That didn't go as well. What's that? That that career didn't go as well. No, no. Gilbert's career. But um, Rivas was- is a no brainer to me. Do you blame yourself for that career as well? You have to take credit for for my time. No, oh. I mean, I'll take credit for Larry when he comes up too. Okay. <laughs> also, <laughs> that'll, be a, that'll be an easy one, uh, an easy in there. Uh, to me, another easy one here is Joe Thomas. He's me a too. Player. Yeah. Those two are slam dunks to me, no matter what. Easy. Poor guy never won a playoff game or anything, but never missed snap. Awesome left tackle. Zach Thomas. He's like a, a one stat guy, you know, let the, it just like tackles like crazy. But that's like the stat that he, you can't trust that. I well. don't like that stat really, at all. Right. Right. A really good player, but you know, not a game changer to me is it's not a hall of fame. Me neither. Uh, and we'll talk about your buddy, Patrick Willis here coming up. I don't think they're even close. I think Willis is needs to go. Zach is going to hit his floor or his ceiling on being a finalist. I Patrick Willis retired early which obviously that's the only thing hurting him right and so he only played uh eight seasons 2007 to 2014 but he was the he he took the baton was passed from ray lewis to patrick willis is the best linebacker in the nfl and then um to me he's in i'm biased i cover the 49ers now you know grew up as a 49ers fan he was so fun to watch he was a modern linebacker with his speed and his range uh he would thump you as well but I understand why he doesn't get in immediately, but I think eventually he should probably get in. Me too. And he has not gotten far in this process in a couple of years. I've been lobbying for him since he was eligible. I think he's a Hall of Fame game-changing player, but he's had an uphill climb. A couple more here. DeMarcus Ware, defensive end, pass rusher for the Dallas Cowboys, uh, finished his career with the Denver Broncos, and he was such an awesome player. And 
Um, I love the DeMarcus Ware story, and, and I, I follow the draft so closely, and, and I did back then when he came out, and I remember you know, coming out of Troy, and he was like a 180-pound wide receiver, goes to college, comes out, and he's a 250-pound now outside linebacker, pass rusher, and uh, I, I love those players who weren't five-star recruits and um, and became superstar players at the college level, and I, and I always read scouting reports where it's in the pros category. It's like, hey, he was a five-star recruit coming out of high school. I'm like, that should be in the cons category. <laughs> yeah, right. star, you're telling me he was an overgrown 15 year old, got recruited and then was, uh, you know, disappointed the rest of the way. And that's supposed to make me want to draft a guy. Now give me the DeMarcus wears all day long. And that's just a, you know, I just, I always remember that coming out of the draft is like a big moment for me. It's like, Oh yes, that, you know, I, I always love those stories and those types of players, but DeMarcus Ware was, was awesome. Uh, he was among the best uh, pass rushers in the NFL in, in that same era with Dwight Freeney is DeMarcus Ware a hall of famer, man. I think so. Ware versus Freeney is a tough one for me. I mean, if I had to pick between the two, but I think they both absolutely get in. Sort of similar to your Revis story and you talking about Ware as a prospect. Well, I was in the Browns war room and we had strongly, strongly considered him with the third overall pick. We ended up taking Braylon Edwards, who was our number one player in that draft. Alex Smith went one. Um, and then Ronnie Brown, who we did, we weren't in the market for either one of those. But I think Ware was in our final top three if Braylon would have happened to have fallen. I remember there was a big fight. It was uh, Sean Merriman that year. Merriman right? versus Ware Merriman was versus a big Ware. battle. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they might have even gone like back to back too. They were both top six ish, you know. Yeah, hundred percent. And there was a battle in our our war room. I remember that people were fighting over the two because the third overall pick, you got a shot at both, you know. The final name on this list is Darren Woodson, longtime Dallas Cowboys safety. I think he's a no. He kind of is that Rondé Barber, Zach Thomas level to me. Like really good, but no. There you go. That is the Hall of Fame finalist class of 2023. We'll see who ends up getting in, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of arguments over the next, uh, what, eight months or so until they they, uh, they they figure that thing out and put everybody into the Hall of Fame with the Hall of Fame game. Yeah, yep, yep. As it is called, aptly. <laughs> okay. I've got some scenarios here, and uh, this is really interesting, and, and shout-out to Warren Sharp, who broke, broke some of this down very succinctly for me to uh, – relay it to you guys as far as that Buffalo Cincinnati game if it is canceled and the it AFC is like decided, going to be it seems like it's the, uh, the I think most people would rather that game not get played and I think mm. that's the ideal scenario here and it's and not the logistics just really hard too yeah uh, and yeah. it's not perfect but that that's the way it's trending it seems like to me uh and then I've seen some ideas of w no contest versus it not getting played at all it's kind of a different idea apparently um, there, there is one idea I saw. It seems outlandish, but apparently people in the league are talking about it. It's a no contest. And then what they would do with the other teams is they would use a random number generator. This was relayed from Ben Albright, who's got great information, is always plugged in. You use a random number generator, basically, to also take another game off of all the other teams that are in tiebreaker scenarios. Oh, I'm hating off. this. Yeah, right. It's, 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 <laughs> I hate so this everyone, already, yeah. You're basing it off of 17 games, and just like how it happened with the Bills and, and the, the Bengals, it was like sort of a random game that ended up not happening. You take a random game off of the other teams and then see now what the seeding is. That seems crazy. That seems crazy. Like, if my Steelers – I mean, I'm always going to bring it back home but because I know his team best – happens to randomly lose the 50 points blowout loss in Buffalo, like – shouldn't that, I mean, that happened you know like, yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, like that's important that to me right. this is the most likely scenario and this is what's laid out here so we're i'm gonna i'm gonna operate on this being the the most likely idea to me yeah. and, and we'll see how the league feels about it but if buffalo cincinnati's canceled and it's decided uh based off of win percentage there so the that in in that case the cincinnati Bengals cannot get the one seed right they're the, the team that kind of gets short changed here yeah they don't have an opportunity but it, it does help them in a way because then the Ravens can't win the AFC North. Oh, that's true. That's true. So it's good and bad. Um, the Kansas City Chiefs get the one seed with a win on Saturday. We'll talk about that game next. And then Buffalo, New England becomes kind of irre irrelevant. A Cincinnati win over Baltimore leapfrogs Buffalo for the two seed. But if Buffalo loses to New England based on tiebreaker, the number four. Yes. Okay. I get that. So. Okay. And, of course, then there's massive ramifications. You know, like, again, Steeler fans need the Patriots to lose. But if that game doesn't mean anything to the Bills, uh, you know, like, 
I mean, and there's scenarios all over the league about that. I'm just using the one that I know the best. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I said irrelevant. Buffalo, New England is relevant. It is not to the Patriots. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Because the the then the um, it's important. Kansas City Obviously, wins. it's quite important for the New England Patriots, but it it also means something for Buffalo. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Confusing okay. as could be. Yeah, scenarios so, yeah, are I don't think I even helped anybody with that. That's, uh, <laughs> really, that's, that's where we're at as of yeah. Thursday, January 5th. So. There you have it. They're uh, one, of the, one of the hardest things to talk about in this job is playoffs. By the, <laughs> by the way, uh, great news this morning. I mean, this is kind of the lead that we buried here. Great news. Um, a release uh, shortly before we went on the air here from the Buffalo Bills. Per physicians caring for DeMar Hamlin at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center, DeMar has shown remarkable improvement over the past 24 hours. While still critically ill, he has demonstrated that he appears to be neurologically intact, which is huge. His mm-hmm. lungs continue to heal, and he is making steady progress. We are grateful for all the love and Fantastic. support we have received. So that, that's about as, as good a news as probably we could hope for right now. Um, and you hope that you know that designation goes from critical condition to stable condition, neuro- neurologically intact. I mean, uh, that, 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 just that term alone uh, is a really exciting thing. So. Absolutely. And you had mentioned, you know, that you retweeted the his fundraiser from around here for kids. I think it's up to like eight million dollars. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's yeah. I'm just seeing it, like no way it grew that much. Right. The, like, NFL players, everybody Owners, yeah. involved and, you know, some deep pockets there. So this is uh, yeah, this is there's uh, some good coming out of this. Absolutely. Absolutely. So still hoping for the best. And, and that's a nice bit of good news here on this Thursday on DeMar Hamlin. Okay, man, where are we? We so need talk to games here, yeah. talk about some of these games. I don't think we're going to get to six complete games, but uh, sure. let's start with the Saturday games and then uh, talk, talk about the top of the draft as well. Next. It's very important to get hiring right for any business. And it's just as true for uh, NFL teams as it is for your small businesses, where, wherever you are, right? Uh, whatever your business needs and you're, you're hiring, it is so important to get that right. And that's why LinkedIn Jobs is there to help you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. Always have fun talking about our friends at Built Bar. If you're looking for a d- delicious treat, you don't want all the fat and calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. They are remarkably good tasting and somehow packed with protein, low in sugar and low in calories. It's really the perfect treat. If you like me and like a lot of people trying, especially after the holidays, right? That that New Year's resolution is I always hate the New Year's resolution, but uh, it's always true because you're always going to eat too much and, and do bad things during the holidays. At least <laughs> I do. And you got to try to thwart that. And for me, it started before the holidays, but uh, continue it after and into the new year. That's why you got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Uh, so delicious, you won't realize how good they are for you. And when I say they're good for you, what am I talking about? Well, most Built Bars are only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And you know you can buy a box of Built Bars at Built.com, but you can also get them on store shelves i've seen them out and about including your local walmart or sam's club that's right head over to the nearest walmart today walk to the pharmacy section grab yourself a box of built bars you can pick up a four box of cookies and cream double chocolate or coconut puff if you're close to a sam's club then you can run in and grab a 13 bar box with all the hit flavors of built bars including brownie batter and churro and then you can go ahead and thank us later and of course find built bars at built.com All right, let's go to that Chiefs game Saturday. It is Chiefs Raiders. We're probably talking about a win in one seed situation for those Kansas City Chiefs going against Jarrett Stidham, who was surprisingly effective last week against the 49ers and the six and 10 Raiders. Kansas City on the road favored by nine and a half. Yeah, nine and a half is too much for me. I mean, Kansas City hasn't been great against the spread this year. They're a great team. They're a great offense, but they don't destroy other teams. And I know Vegas has, quote, nothing to play for, but Jared Stidham sure does, and the head coach sure does, and they played really well last week, as you witnessed. So I think they keep this thing close at home. Familiarity. McDaniel's in his second shot at the Kansas City Chiefs this year. So, you know, good coach. That should – theoretically, that should help as well. So nine and a half is a lot of points on the road. Um, I was impressed with what I saw from the Raiders, but I also feel like 
maybe a little more tape on Stidham, how they're going to sure. utilize yeah. him and utilize the offense without Carr might change some things and help out Andy Reid and the Chiefs as well. I'm going to go the other way and kind of reluctant. Like I wouldn't really put my money on this game, but I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and go the other way and say that the uh, the Chiefs can win this one by double digits. Okay, they've got something to play for. They want to get that one. So. Oh yeah, yeah. This is a big one. This is going to be fun. Saturday the evening. Playoff game. The te- yeah, the playoff game. This is a playoff game, and there's a few of those scenarios. Uh, the playoff game for the Tennessee Titans at the Jacksonville Jaguars. There are no wild cards here. This is – well, I guess the Jaguars still have an in for the wild card, don't they? But it's basically, convoluted, but yes, yeah, that it, they possibly I, could. Look, I, I tried to get through the other part earlier. I, I don't want to confuse don't even anybody further, so I'm not going to go through the wild card scenarios. It's a lot simpler when you're talking about AFC champs in the South – you're you win and you're in if you lose you're out that's what's probably going on here with the titans and the jaguars and it's going to be joshua dobbs once again getting the start for the tennessee titans against trevor lawrence and the jaguars jags favored by six at home i hope a couple listeners way back when put jags plus 700 to win the afc south i mean that was my favorite bet of the preseason hope a couple put a dollar or two on that I'll, i'll send you my paypal information after we win um you know a little tip for williamson but i think jacksonville's a much better team than the titans that being said, the, J- the Titans rested all their main dudes last week, namely Henry and Simmons and the guys that matter most. And the guys that did play have a long week to recover since they played on Thursday. So a well-coached Vrabel team that's probably been gearing up for this game and game planning for it for two whole weeks now and getting everyone fresh. And we know the damage Henry has done to this organization at a Texan-like level. I hate the number. I hate the six. I'm going to take the Jags to win, but I'll take the points in a a game where the Titans are going to leave everything out there. Fake punts, you know, everything, you know, maybe a Willis package. Yeah. And I I don't know if it's because we've done this show so long together with each other, but I Mm -hmm. I was going to say nearly the same darn thing there. Really? uh, I like the Jaguars in this one. I don't think Joshua Dobbs is, uh, you know, going to help them win a playoff game essentially here against the Jaguars. I think the Jaguars are a better football team. Can you stop Derrick Henry? Can you slow down Derrick Henry essentially? And uh, I think there might be some turnovers going the other way from Joshua Dobbs. As surprisingly effective as he looked, you know, maybe you can get some special plays in there. Maybe you see Malik Willis jog onto the field for a couple plays and Mm -hmm. ball bounces your way if you're the Titans, and it could be close, and and that's sort of a Mike Vrabel thing and the way they play defense and the way they play. I do think it could be closer than six points, which is why I would take the points in this game, but uh, I I just really believe in the Jaguars here uh, to to be that team representing the AFC South in the playoffs. Uh, Me too. Let's talk top of the draft. The Chicago Bears are sitting Justin Fields, and they are going to start Nathan Peterman. I mean, this is – I like it from a tank perspective, and it's its kind of funny. I actually – I don't really like it, though, because I would rather see your young quarterback out there. Let him finish the season. Let him go play. Go try to win a football game, right? But it's better for them to not get your running quarterback injured, and it's better for them to get the number one pick, if possible, and for sure make sure they get the, the number two pick in the draft at the very worst. It's the 3-13 and 13 Bears that are hosting the 12-4 and four Vikings. Vikes have something to play for. Uh, that's why they are play, uh, favored by 7.5 here on the road. What do you think about this game? I think the Bears are very happy with how the last couple months have gone. It looks like they have their quarterback. And I think they would be very happy losing this game. <laughs> so, by the way, does this make it that we've seen sixty-four starting quarterbacks? It's more. It's like sixty-eight or something. Oh, like that. oh geez, okay. With, so with Peterman the two starters and Howe. Okay. Peterman and Howe have taken it up over sixty-five. It's like sixty-six right. or sixty-seven, which is insanity. Uh, it's more than the strike year when every team started guys. All those guys went on strike, and then they every team had at least two the strike year. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, and the other one here <laughs> is the Colts and Texans. And right. the Colts aren't playing good ball. They are favored by two and a half at home, but Texans don't screw this up, right? You got the number one pick in your hand. If you win and the and Bears, the, lose. Bears lose, the Bears are the number one pick. That's what I'm predicting. I think the Bears end up with number one. I think I'm very confident the Bears lose. I think Houston ends up with number two. All right. Tons of really good games. Uh, to finish it up on Sunday that we'll get to on tomorrow's podcast, some play-in games, some basically early playoff football for us here in week 18. Talk to you then right here, Peacock and Williamson.